This is part three of 223 in 2023. We've made it to the next stage. Here's our brass, and I also got some pieces here off to the side. But uh, essentially what we're doing next is called swaging. And swaging is only necessary if you're using crimped brass, which crimped brass, nine times out of 10, is usually just military brass. So in our case, so here's that piece of brass that has that crimp, which is like a lip. So when military brass is primed, they add a what's called a power pocket crimp, and it's a mil spec requirement. A lot of militaries do it with military ammo, but to reinsert a primer from this direction, we need to remove that crimp, which is like a lip, which you use what's called a swaging die to do that, which I use the Lee APP, which is this press here in the background, and it comes with a Lee APP swage die. So this is already assembled. It's fairly easy to assemble. Your, dial, your press will come with directions. This is the Lee APP Deluxe. So we're gonna set this up here and uh, to remove that tire pocket crimp, which as I was saying is part of military brass. Once you remove it, and if you reload this brass a second time or a third time or so on and so forth, since you swaged it once, you don't have to swage it again. So swaging is uh, once, it's only done once. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a life of a, bra a piece of brass that happens to be military brass. So if you're not using Lake City or other military brass, I believe PMC is also crimped and I've also seen other brands. I think PPU is crimped. Uh, if you're not using those brands and you, don't, you do not see a crimp because you'll see it in the power pocket, then you should be able to reinsert a primer into that pocket. But we're gonna swage all this Lake City today and we're gonna set up this die, the swager. So I'm gonna take this and it just goes to the bottom here, just like that, and I'm gonna, there we go, all the way up and then finger tight, and then Lee calls for directions to take an adjustable wrench, and just snug that up a little bit, not too crazy, the Lee APP is made of what appears to be cast aluminum, so it's not something that you should wrench on too, so that nice and tight so we just attached the swage die into the bottom this top part is also oops just like that so just making sure it's tight with my hand uh, refocus the camera here I'm gonna get a little closer take a seat here so to complete our adjustment of the swaging die you're gonna take a unswaged piece of brass, which I'll grab, whoops, which I'll grab right here, not swaged, and you insert it. So the Lee APP, the automatic processing press, has a case feeder that feeds into these tubes, which I'll show you once we start operating here. But essentially, to set up your swaging die, it'll come with directions, and I recommend you read those, but we'll gotta scoot back to clear the handle. Push this all the way down. So that needs to be pushed all the way down. And then we're gonna tighten this till there's no more resistance. So there is some resistance. We're gonna raise it. And it says Lee, it says to do another quarter turn. So we're gonna do a quarter turn, just like that. And we're gonna swage. And we're gonna see if that crimp is gone. And it looks like it's still kind of there. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can tell from the camera, but it says to keep going eighth turns from that point on. So we're gonna go another eighth of a turn. I'm gonna run this guy again through the swager. So just push it down all the way, making sure we're all tight here. And it looks like we still, I'm gonna use a primer pocket crimp. Oh, no, sorry, a primer pocket gauge to just, these are from Burst Fire. You can get them on Amazon. I will send you guys a link, but essentially, I'll, I'll post a link and I'll send a link. There's essentially a set of go and no-go gauges. And if the go gauge fits in the brass, that means it's good to go. And if the no gauge, Fits, that means it's too loose, which we're not gonna run into here. Uh, so let me make sure I grab the right one. 
This is still a little tight, so I'm gonna sway just a little, a hair more. I'm gonna go like two eighths of a turn, honestly. Let's see if I see it now. So we're just gonna keep adjusting here. And in my experience with the Lee APP swage kit in the past, I've had to adjust it fairly tight to get crimps out of Lake City. So use that information as you wish. And make those adjustments uh, just to remove that. You'll see it uh, as you're working the brass. Remove that crimp, so. I'm gonna keep adjusting here until I get it. That's the no-go gauge. Here's the go gauge. Or is that the go gauge? Yep, we gotta crank, keep cranking it up, honestly. I've had to, did I do this right? Push it down to the stops and go until you feel resistance, which I definitely do. And then a quarter turn beyond that. That felt good. Okay. Actually, now that's been swaged. So sorry about that, guys. The Lee Swager is a bit of an adjustment, and you guys are going to see me fumble with it. Uh, I still struggle to get my Lee APP running in tip top shape. It's a great press, and it's definitely the fastest and very affordable uh, swaging unit on the market for processing uh, military brass. But again, it's not without its hiccups or its glitches. But once you get it running right with case feeding and swaging and everything, uh, it's a really great tool to have. And uh, I recommend it. So yeah, so our go gauge is fitting inside there. Uh, so. They are pretty tight pockets because you are swaging, uh, maintains that brass, it doesn't remove it. So you get tighter brass, uh, you get tighter power pockets by swaging as compared to reaming. But yeah, the Lee APP with the APP swage kit, uh, this might have been a lot of rambling, but essentially, uh, set up the die according to the directions that Lee gives you to swage out that military power pocket. And once it's gone, it's gone for good. You need to do it again. So, and then we'll just run through these cases here. You guys are going to see me dealing with the Lee APP press uh, and its glitches. So. So we are all set swaging these cases. The batch has been swaged, so we're gonna put these back in the bag. We're gonna do the next step, which is priming. And this is an important step because this is the ignition source. Well, every step we're doing is important. But this is the ignition source for the gunpowder and bullet inside the case. So we're going to be using the same press to do this. So let me show you how, let me show you how I set up the APP to prime cases. Again, dealing with its finickiness while also utilizing its uh, speed and efficiency. These are the primers I'm using today. The Murone KBB223 small rifle primers. I've used these in, I think I've gone through my, my first box of 1,000. I've gone through about 600 so far with no issues and I'm loading at pretty, you know, normal pressures for 5.56. So I haven't had any problems with the Rome.
primers and they've been good for they've been good for me and they're very affordable i got these for six cents a piece which right now primers small rifle primers are going for eight nine cents a piece and above i've been getting them for six so if you see at the store definitely go for the marome primers uh same factory that was making wolf primers for a while so anyways small rifle primers try to find the best that you can there's also a primer guide on the reloading subreddit it's in the discord server as well which i recommend you join but uh they'll give you the scoop on other brands of primers and what you can use and so on and so forth but these have been good for me and uh i recommend them so the lee app priming kit comes with this uh tray and essentially what you're going to do is you're going to open your primer sleeve carefully so you don't spill it because primers are small and well also expensive so you don't want the floor to take them i'm just gonna tear the cardboard here nicely and the way these primers feed you need to have them the correct orientation let me get the camera closer here so i'm just going to dump these very carefully into my primer tray we just lost the one but we got it back so these are obviously not the right orientation. You need these to be flipped so you can give it a nice, gentle side-to-side -side rattle. And your primers should all flip. I just poured 100 in there, and I think this thing holds like probably like 150. And the last few ones, I tend to just kind of go through and flip them manually. But you should be able to get most of them with the side-to-side -side motion. So as you can all see in the camera, they are all facing up, which is the correct direction. You're gonna take this and you're going to close it, but don't lock it because it'll open this chute and it'll shoot them all over the floor. And you know, don't ask me how I know that, but and then this plastic piece can just hold it closed for now. So we're gonna transition over to the press and get that ready to receive the primer tray. We're no longer swaging, so we're gonna remove our swaging die which we'll use this wrench to just take it out of there real quick and then just remove that so this has been removed i'm going to take the lee uh, app priming whoops this is the lee app priming apparatus here so you use the small rifle primer piece with the, the small rifle primer rod that pushes them in. Insert the spring, insert this into here. Insert this piece into here so it's like this. You guys can see, see that? And then this will go just like this into our die piece. So then you're going to go to your press and insert this all the way up until it locks into place. Lock that down nice and snug. So I'm going to bring the camera here closer so you guys can see what I'm referring to in this next step. So let's move this out of the way. This needs to be, see how this is free floating? So this needs to be push down and then there's a little latch here that you're going to engage forward and it's going to lock this see how it's locked now and it can move and then there's also a small primer up which we already in that position so push this down engage the latch it's all locked <clears throat> excuse me it's all locked so that's all set up then you're going to need your your primer feeder so make sure that goes inside there nicely. You're gonna attach the spring. I like to go to the top first. So I'm gonna push this down so it's a little easier to access. And then this is going to slide in and lock in there. And then there's a hook on this primer feeding rod where 
we will engage on the spring. Just get that on there. And now you can see how that action works. Clunky, but it works. Let's see here in a second. That's set up. Let's zoom out here. So now we will take our primer tray, being very careful not to drop it. And they're all, as you can see, they're all facing the correct orientation. So we're going to close this, but again, don't lock it yet. Let me put this on the table. I'm gonna put this on the table and close it just so I don't drop things and make a mess. So I'm just gonna close this. But I'm not going to click, I'm not gonna click the latch to on yet because I don't want the primers to feed yet. And this black plastic piece will actually wait, I forgot one piece. You need the spring guide. There's a loop here that will hold your primer, hold your primer rod spring down. So put this plastic loop in first, and then take your primer tray, and you're going to engage it in this latch. It's going to latch in just like that into some grooves. And then once that's in there, make sure you pinch it to keep it from opening, and then you're going to engage the lock to on. And then you're going to see here, if I can get the camera closer, you're going to see that the primers have begun to feed. So now that primers have fed, uh, again, you guys have to see how the AVP works with the case feeding but I'm just gonna demonstrate without the case feeder for now. So I'm gonna take a piece of brass that's already been swaged. It's ready to receive a primer. So I'm going to pull this back. Let me move the camera out of the way just there. And the primer feeding rod has caught. Let me adjust my camera here for you guys. Primer feeding tray rod has engaged a primer into the into the area. And I'm gonna insert the case manually. So normally it'd be fed. So then this comes down. And then I'm move my phone and you're gonna go down and then push till you feel the resistance stop. And there you have just seated a primer. So when you see primers, you want to make sure that you're seated below flush. So as you can see here, we are seated as far as we can go below flush. You do not want to seat above because that will not always go off. So we're seated below flush. Every time I just do a QC check of my priming, I run my finger over it and I make sure that I don't feel the primer protruding and I feel it just below flush. So that is a primed case that's ready for powder and bullet. zoom out here and we'll just show you guys some priming footage let me just get this out of the way So it's good to just stop and double check the work that you're doing. These primers got a little scuffed up, but they'll be just fine. It's just good to double check what you're doing because I felt something feel weird. And so I stopped just to double check what it was and uh, everything's seated fine. So we're just gonna keep going here. Ugh. So sometimes this is gonna happen 
And it's very heartbreaking because there goes an expensive primer. Uh, but I guess sometimes they just don't get seated properly and the crimp may interfere with that. So it's important to take your time and really feel it out. And if you feel something's not going correct, it's gonna feel normal and smooth. If it doesn't feel that way, stop what you're doing. And usually you're able to correct something that's crooked or off-center, but sadly, this is a dud that we're not gonna be able to use. Heartbreaking, but it happens and that's part of the part of the operation, so. Oh my goodness. So sometimes the swager, that's that's frustrating, I'm gonna be honest. That is annoying. Sometimes the swager just doesn't do a good job and generally I don't have this issue super often, but two cases and less than, that's kind of annoying. But well, if I feel a case that's problematic, I'm just gonna stop. I'm not gonna try to force anything. And not waste precious primers because I can get more brass, but primers I can get more of too. But that costs money. Brass does not cost me money because it's from the range. So, another important facet of reloading is just knowing when to just cut your losses. You know, like it's not that. It, oh my goodness, I am. Oh, we're good. That one's seated fine. So, but again, as I was saying with reloading. Sometimes, you know, as they say, a quarter is not worth your fingers. So don't be super like, oh, I can't throw away rounds because they cost money, blah, blah, blah. Like don't, don't take stupid risks, you know, unnecessary risks. So just take it slow, take your time. So we're done here, and one thing I like to do is I like to put all the primed brass in reloading trays upside down, just so I can just do a nice quick glance at all of them and inspect them, and also to catch errors like this. This was a case that fell in there that didn't get a primer, and I knew it was in there because I saw it, but when I went to fish out of the bucket, I couldn't find it, so I said, okay, when I get to this part, I will remove it from the batch. As you can see, 90 out of 100 this time. We had our two Hall of Shamers right here, which are obviously not suitable, not appropriate to shoot. Please don't try this. This is clearly not gonna work. But uh, these are just a result of me not feeling it out and forcing it when I kind of had a hunch and it was not seated right. Sometimes the primers get twisted in the in the, in the loading base. Sometimes they, they land upside down, sometimes they and, and the fact that these are crimped cases and they were swaged, and swaging is, isn't always perfect, 
if, if the primer lands a little, a little crooked and then you end up getting uh, a swaged, a piece of crimp, like hitting it, you can get primer seating funky like that. So just take your time with this. You're not an ammo factory. I mean, I, I like to think of myself as one. I try to, but then I come back to earth. I, I drown myself and realize, hey, you know what? If you make mistakes, it's okay. If you got to go a little slower to do a good job, that's completely okay. Do not rush through this. Prime slowly. It's important. It's your ignition for your case. If the primer fails, no bang. I mean, if everything, if anything fails, no bang, right? But especially the primer. Take your time. Do a good job. And the lead APP, once you figure it out how to game it, it makes for a great press for what it costs. And considering how it's pretty simple, uh, doing it in front of a camera can be difficult. I kind of had like a limited space and I was also a little nervous. And just when I'm reloading in my just in my element without a camera on, it seems like it's easier and I don't have to uh, get all sorts of camera angles and whatnot. I can just load to what's most ergonomic to me. But we just primed 98 cases. So we'll see you guys in the next video where we do load development and then uh, a range test of our ammunition that we have made from, tumble, from on the floor at the range to tumbler to, well, we're almost there. We'll have some ammo to train with or shoot with. And we'll have a load developed for whatever purpose you may have. So we'll catch you guys next time.